uh, uh, this is Ming Jun. Uh, I'm uh, I working with uh, Nanjo Godot and Charles Sutton. Uh, so, uh, so in this talk, I, I'm going to uh, talk about a, a specific uh, method for uh, tackling the the new. So we propose to incorporate the long-term and the population level information into the model for tackling the new. Uh, so th this work is based on the uh, this was based on the uh, ideal project. Uh, so in this project, we are going to uh, collect some data uh, from from some households, and then uh, and then store the data into a database. So after that, uh, we're going to uh, using machine learning method to uh, uh, e extract some uh, useful information. And then we write back the database and to the feedback. So the feedback will uh, write uh, the outputs from the uh, machine learning to the users. So at the moment, my uh, main uh, work is the uh, energy disaggregation problem, uh, which is the new. So. So this is the new. I think everyone knows. The problem, problem already, so just skip this. And for the uh, neum, so we are interested in the feedback actually. So why why should we do the neum? Because we are interested in uh, uh, so feedback to the to the users. Then, so then I, I would like to think of, think about some uh, questions. So what questions that uh, users uh, are interested in? So I just group, group, uh, uh, grouped up the uh, information in two. So why the short-term information, why the long-term? So uh, let's just think about the feedback that uh, the users may may want to ask uh, about the uh, the, uh, the those questions like uh, at a particular time. So what appliances were using? And also, how much energy was uh, was used at that time? This is uh, a fine-grained information. And also, I I think uh, many users might be uh, interested in some uh, cost-grained information. See, in one day or one week, even one month, that uh, how how much energy. Uh, were used by uh, some uh, appliances, and how long in one day, for example, so the appliance was using those sorts of questions. So, so actually, in this talk, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the method that how to incorporate those information into the model that uh, could help the new. So uh, basically, uh, for the new, uh, I think it is just uh, a, a, a problem of the single channel blend source relation problem. That you you just denote the means uh, by the y, and the appliance by the x. So you want to infer the x from the y. So this is the problem. So we already know that there's no unique solution. I call it just the identifiability problem because every appliance could exchange at any time point. That's the main problem. So as so why is so difficult? It's because we only know one one date time point uh, at any time. So that means we don't have enough information <coughs> for the model, then that, that causes a problem. And I think as, as Mar, uh, Marius uh, talked in this morning that uh, he's going to use side sensors for, for, the, uh, for this problem. 
that, that could help because you have more information. So now I'm talking about the another approach that we use more information to the model, uh, which so which is going to be the the long term and short term information I talked. So for the short term information, I think uh, in my view the HMM. I think everyone knows this already. That uh, for for the HMM, which is actually the short term information in my view, because we have the appliance here, and at time t we have the state of that appliance. If we, if we already know all those states s, then we know the details of this appliance. This is quite this is actually the uh, fine-grained information. So I, I want to uh, talk about this in detail. So this is the uh, factorial HMA model for the NIL, so which is widely used in the, this problem. So basically, I just hear the PY given S is the, uh, the NIL model. The PS here in the HMM is just a lot, is just the short term information. So, so now uh, I'm going to talk about the long term information. So, so the, these plots are some summary statistics per day of some interesting uh, statistics, uh, some interesting uh, 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 statistics. Uh, so let's uh, do some experiments. <coughs> For example, the cattle. I used the has data. Uh, for the cattle, what a, uh, about more than 5,000 D samples. So let's think about this problem. That for the cattle, if you have known the number of times using the cattle in one day, then given this number, I'm just using the number of cycles to, to denote the number of times using the uh, cattle in one day. Then given this number, we could, we could be able to uh, approximately estimate the, the, the energy using in one day. There could be some uh, approximate number for the energy. <coughs> but, and also the duration. The duration here means how long the appliance was using in one day. Okay, now let's do the let's look at this diagram. So the x-axis is the number of uh, cycles for the cattle, and the y is the the statistics of the days uh, when you fix the number of cycles. Then we have two peaks here. One is zero. That means in the in one day, so nothing cattle is using. Then then the other peak is the uh, about five. So which means most of the time the cattle was not using, or when it was using, probably is about five times around. So. So this diagram is the x-axis is, is the number of cycles, the y is the energy using the means and the standard standard deviation. So this means if you fix the number of cycles for the cattle, then the energy using could be probably you could use a Gaussian distribution, which has a mean and and uh, variance. So this is similar. This is the duration. Why is the minutes for for one day using for the cattle when you fixing the number of uh, cycles? So this is the washing machine using about 500 days. So so we see that they, they are different if you look at this. So the the statistics of the number of cycles. So here is just almost zero. Uh, there's one mode which is zero. That means most of the washing machine is not using. 
So this is similar uh, graph uh, of the with respect to the cattle. So, so we have these beautiful diagrams for those statistics. So we're going to use this to help our uh, new problem. So then how to use this information? So we're going to uh, define a pro probabilistic probabil model for those summary statistics. So we use TOR to, def to denote the energy, the duration of those statistics, and so forth. And then there's a latent variable, so which the TOR depends on the, the C here. So the C, for example, here is the number of cycles. So then given a C, the distribution of the TOR is you could use a Gaussian density function or linear regression function. The case is a number of cycles. It could be just uh, this discrete uh, uh, discrete uh, distribution. So 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 now we have both the short term and long term information. The problem is how do we connect these two kinds of information. So one way is we could find a determinist function for those two variables. So for example here, uh, the energy used on number of cycles is just a linear function of all those uh, states of the HMMs. So this is just a linear function. So now, let's look at the summary of the, uh, the short-term and long-term information. We have the, the uh, uh, fine grain, which probably is per minute, and the, uh, the coarse grain probably uh, per day. Then for each information, we could define different models. This is the, just uh, the uh, factorial HMM. So this is the uh, the model for the summary statistics, and then we have the connecting information using a determinist function for both uh, variables. So now we have different models for different information for the appliances. Then the question is how to combine these models. So we employed the Bayesian melding. The idea is that we we pushing the information in the tall, which is the summary statistics, into the uh, the short term information, the which is the states <coughs> of the hidden Mach models. Then we define so th this will form a new distribution of the HMMs. So here, you see here, is the uh, the, the basic uh, hidden mark model. So this this uh, this part has the, the information, which is the summary statistics. Then we use the, the basic Bayesian rule to define a new model. So then we make an inference. So how to... Uh, implement uh, uh, this algorithm. So we we transform it to a relaxed second order coin program. So then we implement the algorithms and the neom TK uh, using Python. Uh, then we're using the mosaic solver for the uh, SOCP. So this is the one result that we applied the uh, basic uh, model and the R model to uh, to the UK dial data, but for the training we're using the hash data to train all those parameters. So, so in, the, in a different source of errors. So the NDE is the is the marrying the time point uh, error, and all these SAED and CAE is marrying the uh, 
long-term uh, uh, information for C for one day. So it's improved a little bit. At uh, the time, it was quite similar. So this is some examples uh, shown here. So this is the FHM. So the the truth is uh, is in gr uh, is in blue, and inferred is is the red. So this is the the new method. So that uh, so here you see the about uh, four four uh, uh, times used uh, by AFHM is wrongly uh, estimated. So this looks better. So this is the freezer. So actually, for AFHM, it's, it's nothing estimated. But this method uh, estimates a uh, little bit better. So why? Because it's exchanging the freezer with a, di uh, uh, with a dish, uh, dishwasher. So this also, dishwasher is, is most time, I think, is just freezer. So this one, a little bit better. And actually, both methods can perfectly match the two uh, means uh, for the inferred means. So this is the, the basic method. This is new method. Right, the conclusions. So we show that we, we show that the incorporating long-term and population-level information into the FHM can reduce the distribution. Why? Because we use more information to the to the model. But I think it's still a long journey to fully solve this problem. Okay, thank you.